In today's video, I'm gonna cover everything that you need to know about how to set up your pre-supports in Lychee Slicer. First thing is to navigate to the support presets. You'll find those under prepare and then support on the left and then on the right where it says global tip, that's the support presets. Now, if you do have access to Lychee Plus or the Lychee library, you're gonna have access to all the support settings as well as three additional presets Right now, these support presets just say create. So first thing, let's talk about how to set up your support presets, since this is one of the questions I get all the time. And I understand why there's a little bit of a confusion here, but after I show you the trick, I think you're gonna find it really easy to set up your support presets. I placed a medium here and I placed a light. So I've got a light and a medium. And you see when I select them, the blue bar goes back and forth between medium and light. But if I take this medium right here and I start shrinking this down, what you're gonna see is gonna happen, oh, wrong way. I'm gonna shrink it down it's gonna jump. For this one, it jumped over to medium heavy. But if I keep messing with it, it's gonna jump around to light or medium light. And it's gonna have that asterisk next to it. And I think when some people, they're coming in here and they're going to create their support presets, they change the settings, it jumps to a different preset and they get confused. Again, there's no reason to get confused. All you do is just go down to the gear, select the one you want, the current settings, the settings up here to overwrite, click on that gear and then click on overwrite and you're done. And that's pretty much the trick. This is how you're gonna set up all your pre-supports. You're just gonna stay right here in this menu and you're just gonna dial them in. So for example, my medium, I like my medium to be 0.3 and I like my diameter on my medium to be a little bit bigger by 1.1. So now with this done, you can still see it says light selected here, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go over to medium, click on the gear, hit override. And for heavy, I like mine to be 0.4 and the diameter to be 1.3. I'm gonna click on the gear over heavy and hit override. And there we go. So now, just like that, I've set up a brand new light, medium, and heavy support preset, all without even leaving this menu at all. And I can just click on the X to close it when I'm done. Now, if you're gonna, if you're using Lychee Plus or Lychee Library, this is where you got these three extra. If you click on Create here, it's gonna come up with a dialog box. You can name it whatever you want. So you can do this one like uh, medium ML for like medium lighter, whatever you want to do, right? You can get creative with it. Let's do this for now. And you see right here, it's created this medium light down here in the bottom. From here, I can do the same thing. So medium light, let's say it's gonna be in between medium and heavy. So let's set this guy to, um, we'll click on the this right here, go to medium medium uh, light right here. I'm just gonna set it to uh, 3.4, why not? And let's do 1.1, go down to medium light, and then click on override. Now, if I want to move this around from being the bottom left to let's say the center or the right, I can just do that by clicking on these right here. And you can see it's gonna jump around depending on how I click on these presets right here. And that's how these ones work here at the bottom with the presets library, is first you create the preset and then you select where you want it to go once it's created. Uh, if it's never been created before and I click on create right here as you saw before, uh, let's just type in a bunch of nothing. It's going to create it in the slot that I cr clicked create on. But if I come down here and hit click add new preset um, and type it in, it doesn't know where to put it. So from here, I have to go through and actually select where I want it to go uh, for that one, you know, right there. Now there's also an easier way to do all of this. If you've got access to someone else's pre-supports, which you do, link in the description. And all you have to do on that one is click on the gear, click on import, and then locate the file you downloaded, which will be a .lyx file. Uh, open that up and now you're going to get a import presets dialog right here it's going to show you the difference between what you have and what you're about to import for this one i'm just going to select all i'm going to override the light medium and heavy and i'm going to add three new presets to my preset library that's going to be interior pillar medium heavy and ultra light i'm going to click on import and that's going to add them all here now although they've been added they're not added to the bottom here so now i still have to put them in the slot that i want so that's the, just as easy i come here to the gear click on the gear right here I like my interior pillar to be in the bottom right. I like my medium heavy to be in the bottom center and my ultra light to be on the bottom left. And it's pretty much that easy. I've showed you how to create your own pre-supports from scratch or to download them and put them in the light slots. Something else that's very important is that the light, medium, and heavy, you can't change the names. You can only change the support settings, but you can't override the names. On the bottom three, those are the ones where you can pretty much name them whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. Just a quick interruption in this video. To ask you if you could, please like and subscribe to this video. And if you could, also comment below if you learned something new or if there's something you're trying to figure out and you're having a hard time with and you need some help. For this part of the video, I'm gonna cover the settings we find under tip, mid, base, and base tip, since we already talked about global. Now again, you only have these settings if you have Lychee Plus or the Lychee Library. So real quick, 
penetration. Penetration is something we don't want to use. It's kind of a carryover from FDM. You, you don't need it for resin and you really don't want to use it. When you use penetration, a lot of weird things can happen. I'm not going to go over it in this video. Just know that you, you don't want to use penetration. Something that is really cool though is the break point. You can see here if I scale that up, what that does, it creates a ball. That ball is really cool because when you break off the support tip, sometimes it leaves a divot. But if you leave a ball right there, the support tip will break off leaving the ball instead. And you have to sand that down. And a lot of people, myself included, find sanding down a support tip ball much easier than like filling in a divot and then, you know, sanding it back down. It's just a lot less work to do it this way on surfaces where that type of detail is required. Moving down tip diameter. I showed you, but I didn't really talk about it. The tip diameter is this ball right here that makes contact with the model. The length here at the bottom is the length between the tip point and where the support shaft begins. It's pretty much the line between these two balls right here. Moving down to the mid, there's these two balls, the one at the top, the one at the bottom, and then there's the shaft here. I don't know who came up with this naming convention. It wasn't me. Um, and then pretty much you can you can scale them independently, the, the one towards the bottom, the one up towards the top. And that's the that's the mid. That's all there is to it. It's it's pretty simple. The base is where things can get kind of fun. There's a drop down here where you can change the different types of base uh, between the cone, the octagon, you know, and cross. If you use a raft, this gets overwritten. So a lot of people don't really mess with this very much because most people use rafts. So adaptive base is where um, it's going to take away part of that base so it doesn't collide with the model. Of course, this only applies if you're printing on the build plate and you still have to use supports. Uh, and again, it also, you can't be using rafts. So it's a very uh, niche use case for this one, but that's what adaptive base does. Moving down the base, um, the join cone right there, that's if you see people who have the cones, that's where they're getting that from. That's the join cone. The diameter, of course, is just gonna, how big that's gonna be. The thickness, again, how thick it's gonna be. And then the angle factor. This is if you want to not use um, rafts at all and you're going to turn your bases into rafts. I've seen a few people do that. There's some pros and cons here. I played around with it somewhat myself and in the end for me personally I just prefer to use rafts. I think it's easier and I like how the rafts creates a big cross section to attach to the build plate really well but there's a lot of people who use this method and really like it so I mean it's up to you. Go go play around, have fun and, and try it all out. And the last one here is the base tip. Now you'll notice the base tip is grayed out and it's grayed out because in order for this to show up I have to have a support that makes contact with the model in two sides. So let's say, you know, right there, one on his beak right there and one on his foot. Now you'll notice the base tip is highlighted. And that's because the base tip is just like the tip. But the difference is, is it's, it's talking about the one here at the bottom at the base versus the one here at the top on the beak. And it's the same settings as before. You've got the tip diameter, penetration, uh, which you don't want to use. And of course, the breaking point if you want to. And then the length if you want to make that you know bigger or smaller. The length is just this guy right here. Now the little thing here, under global, you can actually change the shape of everything just by the cross or the cube of the support. But again, for me, I find that the cone shape is just the best and easiest to use across the board. Now there's two other types of supports that I'm going to just show here real quick, but these aren't settings that you can save in any preset. They're just kind of like hidden support types. The first one being is a mini support. And the second one is a bracing support right here. Now the difference between a bracing and a mini is not much. What they have in common is it's just a support shaft with only two connection points. So only two balls, one on the top, one on the bottom. Same thing here. You can see the two balls top and bottom. Uh, this terminology is killing me. <laughs> now the difference between a mini and a bracing is the bracing cannot make contact with the model. It can make contact with another support or the build plate, but not the model. And what makes a mini a mini is it's going to make contact with the model. It may make the contact with the model either on the top or on the bottom or both. It doesn't matter. But as soon as a bracing makes contact with the model, it's no longer bracing. It's now labeled and characterized as a mini support. Now in both a mini and a bracing, you can apply your resin presets to them. All you have to do is click on it. And then what you can do here is just click on, let's say I want it to be a light, a medium, an ultra light, heavy, and you'll see they'll actually scale. But you'll see they're scaling differently. That's because a bracing is going to use my support uh, the diameter of the support shaft. So this one's 1.1. So if I click on this one, hit medium, you'll see it goes to 1.1. Where a mini is actually going to use the preset for the support tip. So you see my medium right here uses a tip diameter of 0.3 millimeters. If I click on my mini right here and it's set to medium, it's 0.3. Light, you know, 0.4, heavy 0.4, or sorry, light 2.4, medium 0.4. You can see it grows as I, as I use these ones. And that's another difference between a bracing and a mini support. 
Again, bracing uses the diameter of the support shaft. Mini uses the diameter of the support tip. And I think that covers it for this one. You know the drill by now. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. And if you have any more questions, or if you learned something new, comment below or reach out to us on our Lychee Slicer Discord. And for now, thank you for watching and have a good day.